Hey everybody, welcome to the Art of Relationship Show. We're going to talk about a subject that, let's face it, most people are interested in, about sexual desire. There's a lot of myths out there, and we're going to talk about the reality versus the myths, so don't go anywhere. I'm going to be back right here talking about sexual desires, myths, and realities, okay? Don't go anywhere. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Going to be talking about, you know what, the myths and realities about sexual desire, right? Everybody thinks men, right, are ready to go when the wind blows, right? They're, you know, they're turned on as long as they have an erection, right? Standing at attention, right? <laughs> um, that's not necessarily true, people. Okay. You, number one, I want you to be able to understand that sexual desire is brought about pleasure. You get me? The number one thing that sort of... Me, if you want to talk about desire that kicks up desire is getting pleasure from sex, plain and simple, right? A lot of people believe that, you know, everybody's heard of Freud and the sexual drives and all this stuff. Actually, sex tends to be a motivation, okay? We tend to be motivated to get more, maybe closer to somebody, have physical pleasure, right? There, we are not going to die without sex, even though there's going to be some people out there that tell you, ladies, maybe ladies out there, I need sex or I'm going to die, right? Or you're going to feel like you're going to explode if you don't have sex. You're not going to, okay? It's not a biological drive. There are some arguments out there about the biological drive to, you know, procreate, uh, you know, that you flourish, uh, multiply and have kids and populate the planet and all that stuff, right? But sexual desire comes from motivation. And the number one motivation about sexual drive is about the pleasure you get from sex, plain and simple, okay? So sex tends to be more responsive, write this down, tends to be more responsive over spontaneous, right? Everybody assumes men are more spontaneous when it comes to sex and they can be hard, like I said, when the wind blows, right? Or, you know, is it more responsive that you get turned on by something? It triggers the desire. Maybe a memory of sexual pleasure, all of a sudden you're turned on again, right? Maybe uh, you're responsive or a reaction to a stimuli. Let's just put it at that, okay? And we can be able to look at the situation about, hey, Tony Irvin, I appreciate you turning, you know, showing up. So when it comes to responsive desire, you got to remember, you know, you're responding to a stimuli. You're responding to somebody. Maybe, ladies, you see a hot guy, whatever that looks like in your eyes, or a hot woman for guys, you know, if you're heterosexual. And it might go, you know, for same-sex genders as well. You respond to a stimuli, and then it turns you on. It's very rare that it's spontaneous, that it comes from, you know, you're turned on no matter what. And we tell you, hey, Greg, I got a morning wood. I get all that. And that could be testosterone body aspects. Or are you actually having a dream right before you wake up that you don't even realize, right? Or how many people wake up with a pee boner, right? Once in a while, right? Maybe as we age, we don't wake up that much uh, with one. So you look at those elements about desire tends to be more responsive, okay? And another aspect that goes along with the responsive desire Okay, what triggers it? What, what, you know, what sort of kicks up your reaction to be turned on, to be desired, to want to have sex, okay? Knowing that you're going to get pleasure from it, let's face it, okay? But pleasure can be deemed so many different levels, okay? We can talk about the physical pleasure, right? Absolutely, right? Kissing. But it also can be the emotional pleasure, the connection you get from somebody, the eye-to-eye -eye contact plus the physical pleasure, the more pleasure you obtain from sex, let's face it, the more you are going to want sex. Simple, right? When there's so many different variations to this as well. When I say it's also context-driven, 
or maybe situational driven. You get me? Sometimes you can be playful and you can be ticklish, right? And you turn each other on, have playful, have great sex, right? The next day you do the same thing and your partner or maybe your partner does it to you and you're pissed at them. What are you doing? Leave me alone. (laughs) You get me? That they're in a bad mood. They're not feeling well. They had a bad day at work or the kids drove them nuts, whatever. And now they're not in the mood or found out that their loved one just passed away that just died, right? And all of a sudden, let's face it, tickling is going to annoy somebody where the day before it turned you on. So I want you to understand that sexual desire is very responsive and is very context or situational driven, okay? There are situations, and I I give couples, once in a while, I give them what I call, you know, what turn, turn ons and turn offs. What turns you on? What turns you off? Yourself, right? Maybe you're thinking of you don't feel good about yourself, right? It could be body image aspects. Maybe you have sexual insecurities, performance insecurities. I'm not good enough. I don't last long enough. You know, I'm not large enough. I'm not, I don't have big enough boobs. I don't have a nice enough ass, that type of stuff. And you can turn yourself off, right? Just by thinking about it. Or you can turn yourself on remembering the last time your lover brought you flowers or you know what, that you did a nasty dance for your lover type of stuff and turned them on. You can turn yourself on emotionally and mentally easy to do, right? So these are situations I try to get with couples and try to understand about, you know, when people come in with desire discrepancies, I'm looking at context driven, situational, of course, right? Is it more responsive versus spontaneous, which let's face it, most of the time it is, even for men, tends to be more spontaneous. Or I'm sorry, more responsive. Let me back up. Tends to be more responsive than spontaneous. There we go. But I'm also looking at what also, you know, involves desire, right? Let's get the biological aspects, right? Have you had blood work done? Is your biology, um, you know, clock ticking? Hormone aspects, testosterone levels for men. There's two testosterone levels for men. Estrogen levels for women. There's three estrogen levels for women. Hey, Patrick, no, actually my office is not downtown Detroit. I'll get back. It's in Southfield right now, which is just outside of downtown. I miss downtown, but it's in Southfield. So going back to um, the biological aspects, you know, is there diabetes? Is there blood pressure? Um, Is there thyroid aspects that can really, you know, throw a wrench into mood, desire, energy, that type of aspect? Are you on medication that can kill your desire? So I'm looking at those aspects too, that get in the way, okay? Or, you know, societal, environmental aspects, right? Context driven, are you gonna be responsive if you're worried about the kids walking in while you're having sex? Some people don't care. Some people, it just, you know, the thought of it just turns them off right away. And yes, it's both men and women, right? There's men, women that they, I don't care if the kids hear us and the, the, the guy's like, oh my God, I can't handle that, I can't, Take that. Everybody assumes it's one gender or the other. It isn't. So when you look at societal or context, environmental aspects, right? You're living at how many people live with their parents. Maybe you're still in your early 20s and you are living with your parents and you don't want them to hear you having sex with your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your partner, or maybe they have a situation where, oh, sex is only for marriage. I will never, ever promote that, people. Do what you want. I'll never promote that. For There's a lot of, that's a whole nother episode, okay? So when you're looking at responsive and desire and what turns you on uh, sexually, there's a lot of aspects that come into it. And we tend to get more in the mood, more reactive, more responsive, based on the stimuli and what our partner does, or maybe we turn ourselves on in the mood by watching movies, right? You know, a love scene, reading a, a, a book, reading a, you know, nasty, you know, romance novel, that type of thing. But also society, environmental aspects, stress, exhaustion. What about how we were raised? Religious beliefs can also kill our you know, desire, oh, good girls don't like sex or good girls don't want to have sex. It's something they do to please men only. And I'm like, forget that. I am all about women being pleased. (laughs) Woohoo! I love women being sexually pleased. 
own it, ladies, okay? So when you're looking at these elements and looking at these aspects, when desire is an issue, you know, find out what's going on. Is it, you know, responsive? Maybe your partner, how many people have said that, you know, I'm not really in the mood, but I can get in the mood, right? Maybe I'm not really in the mood. I'm not thinking of sex. And then my partner starts kissing me or, you know, hopping on my lap or tickling me, that type of situation. And a lot of people, let's face it, you know, when, you know, women, old men are more spontaneous when it comes to sex, they watch if they watch porn, they get turned on. Some men, some women do, right? But that is a reaction. That is responsive, right? You're watching a stimuli, the porn, and it turns you on. So it's not really spontaneous, you get me? It's more responsive when it comes to desire in relationships and sexual you know, wants and cravings and everything else, right? And even, um, you know, you look at researchers, um, you know, Emily Naskowski, uh, Peggy Klein Platts, um, Dr. Justin, you know, Lee Miller. There's, I could go on and on, you know, top researchers in the area about sex and desire and wants, those aspects, right? We get a lot of information from those areas. And to be able to understand, you know, what is it about us that turns us on, where desire comes from? And that's where I said about the myths and the realities about it, okay? So remember, okay? Um, that most of our sexual response is about knowing that there's going to be physical pleasure or emotional pleasure, closeness or whatever we get from sex. The more pleasure we receive from sex on the emotional, soulful, emotional levels, the more we're going to want it with our partner, right? And we could get into, you know, performance aspects, right? If we, our partner is not into us that much, right? Or just going through the motions sexually, right? Oh, I'm just doing it because I'll get her off my back because we haven't had sex in a while. Or I'll just, you know, throw him a token because we haven't had sex in a while, even though I really don't want to do that. Is that really going to turn our partners on? Chances are no. Some people it will, and that's a whole nother issue. But chances are you're not going to be turned on and your desire is going to be, you know, it's going to be killed. It's going to be destroyed. It's going to be very low. So when you have low desire aspects, I'm looking at what is going on in that relationship. What is going on in that, you know, in the marriage about, you know, what's, is it a relationship thing? Is it an individual aspect about exhaustion, past trauma, sexual abuse, rape, those type of aspects? <clears throat> that trauma is destroying those type of elements, okay? So I'm looking at, is it a relationship thing or is it an individual element that is being able to understand what is happening that is possibly getting in the way of desire or is, what do you find desirable about sex? And some people, the term, you know, asexual, right? And we could bash, you know, sort of, that term or, you know, that type, is that a rude term or not? Most people know about, you know, asexual where they don't get any desire, they don't get turned on, or is it the type of sex they get? Is it based by past trauma? Is it biological aspects? And there are women that actually have no testosterone, hardly at all registered in their blood work, and they get testosterone replacement therapy, even for women, and it kicks up their desire, again, if you want that, okay? Desire is something that I'm all about that you want, that you want to get pleasure from. It's not something that automatically snaps, right? That's spontaneous. Oh, I'm turned on. Or, you know what? You should be turned on because there's a full moon out there. Maybe some people will be. Maybe some people won't. So you have to be able to look at, you know, those elements in the context of how desire is a reaction to that pleasure, okay? And another thing, there's a huge myth out there, right? When some people, oh, as long as he comes, as long as he has an erection, as long as she's wet or has an orgasm, oh man, that means he or she enjoyed sex. Remember I talked about the biggest uh, intricate aspect is about getting pleasure from sex? Absolutely. Everybody assumes because there's a physical response to sex, right? That they enjoy it. Not at all. I can tell you there are countless, countless 
teens, women, kids I've worked with that have been sexually abused, that have been raped, um, that have, they feel guilty for having a physiological um, reaction when someone rapes them, physically abuse them, they get wet. Some women might have even an orgasm during a rape and they feel guilty for it. It's your body's natural, it's your body's response, okay? It's, that's what I'm saying about because someone gets wet or gets hard, has an orgasm, that they enjoyed sex, okay? And this is not the case. I want you to enjoy sex, but everybody assumes when somebody gets wet or somebody has an orgasm that they enjoy, had a pleasurable sexual experience. That's not always the case, okay? Even though, say, a woman might have an orgasm, she still might feel like the she got treated like a piece of meat. Or there's a guy, right? Everybody, every woman, how many women out there believe that a woman has an or or a guy has an orgasm? Oh, he's satisfied. That's not necessarily true. He might feel like the woman was not, or his partner, let's face it, same sex relationship, was not into it. That just threw him a token, right? That wasn't really into the sexual act and just it was all about, you know, him and that you did not enjoy it. And that's a turnoff. So a lot of people assume because you have a physiological response, right, that you enjoyed the sexual experience. That's not true. You have to look at what do you want from sex? You know, what do you find pleasurable about sex? And I talked about the societal aspect. I talked about the environmental aspects, you know, and that it's context driven. It's situational driven when it comes to these aspects, okay? And you talk about the emotional reactivity to sex or whatever, you know, that could kill desire as well. Anxiety, depression, right? What about disconnect in a relationship? What about, and I already mentioned this, what about abuse, criticism, that you're feeling degraded in a relationship on a regular basis and you are not going to throw in, you're not gonna be turned on, right? Your reaction to sex is gonna be low desire. Why wouldn't it be, right? Performance insecurities. There's a lot of men, a lot of women out there, if they feel like they're not good enough, they're not pleasing their partner, they're, they might want sex, but then they're scared. They don't want sex. They turn themselves off or their partner does because of shaming. I'm not about body shaming. I'm not about sexual shaming. Not at all, people. But sometimes we turn ourselves off or a partner turns us off by making comments, right? Derogatory, demeaning re, you know, comments. Therefore, we don't want to put ourselves out there sexually because I'm not going to be good enough. I'm not going to be whatever it is sexually. So why would I put myself out there to be degraded, to be criticized, okay? You need to be able to stop that and work together about what you do like about sex, what you want, and how do you want it to be. Are there sexual incompatibilities? There's some arguments out there. I believe there are huge sexual incompatibilities when it comes to frequency, when it comes to styles of sex, sexual orientations, right? So I'm a huge component that you can definitely be sexual, you know, sexually incompatible. And there are some researchers out there that we can, you know, we might be turned on by one person over the years. And now we're not turned on by them. Is it a physical aspect as well? There's a lot of research out there, or I would say a lack of research out there, my bad, about, you know, what turns us on in a partner, right? That we can be, you know, we're conditioned to be attracted to a certain people, right? I'm a short dude. There's women that aren't attracted to short dude. I get it. You know, I'm not attracted to every type of woman out there. So, you know, is it, you know, sort of situational? Are we um, conditioned to be that? I'm a, more of a firm believer that there might be a little conditioning, but it's almost like we like what we like and we don't know where we got it from. It's just one of those things that we're attracted to. You get me? It's almost like, okay, are we conditioned to like a certain food? Maybe, perhaps, right? But there's some food we will never, ever like we might have tried it 20 times and we still hate it so there's some things we can never be conditioned to so going on here uh patrick you mentioned is menopause really a reason that can cause low sexual desire absolutely uh patrick this is also we have to look at when it comes to menopause there is hormones uh biological aspects that come into play now again this is not for every woman or every woman, I'm sorry. There are women, 
out there that go through, you know, premenopausal or in full blown menopause or postmenopausal that are, you know, they have high sex desire. They still have high sex desire. A lot of it with menopause aspects. We have to look at, of course, the biological aspect, the loss of est estrogen aspects in women, but also with that, the thinning of the vaginal lining um, if you are penetrative sex, right? So you might have soreness, you might have more dryness. So sex becomes very painful. And if sex is very painful, like I said, remember at the beginning, the number one predictor of desirable sex is pleasure, let's face it, right? Is having sexual pleasure, that you have great pleasure from sex. And that is what sort of drives our responsive sexual desire. So if sex is painful and the thinning of the vaginal lining uh, creates in women with menopause, those type of elements or decreases it because of biological estrogen levels, it's going to be painful, and that's where that comes from, okay? And not only that, how many women emotionally look at, oh, I'm a, my, excuse me, I'm menopausal now. I might be old. My body changes. There might be a psychological, emotional element to menopause as well that it might be outside of uh, biological, you know, physiological elements that could be, you know, women killing their own desire. I'm menopausal, so I, you know, I'm supposed to not like sex anymore. I can't have, you know, babies anymore. Um, uh, um, you know, I'm supposed to be all this. So it could be their own self-concept and what they view themselves about going into or full-blown menopause that could have a predictor or a consideration. Like I said, it's context driven. So it could be the emotional element about their own concept about themselves when they go through menopause. Okay. Are men scared if their lady goes through menopause? Um, you know, the moodiness aspects, is it, you know, let's face it, the biological, the estrogen levels, the changes in the body that goes on for women. Um, so we have to take all these into consideration. So, you know, is menopause a real reason? It absolutely can be. There's a lot of myths out there, a lot of um, people that can harm women and couples in general that say, oh, you can be horny even in, in menopause and here, take this or whatever. There's a lot of myths out there that can cause damage. And again, it's got to be assessed by each individual basis, each individual women, woman that is in menopause, you know, get with the OB and, you know, doctors and those type of aspects and, you know, where you're at, what's going on, you know, with menopause, chances are there's more lube that are going to be used. I said lube because of maybe the dryness, the extra dryness that happens with the physiological changes in women as they age. Women, you know it. I wish you never went through this as well. Believe me, I'm glad I'm a man, not a woman. I, I you know, I <laughs> believe me, I give you a lot of pressure, okay? Uh, hey, Tony, you mentioned uh, pleasure and desire is the best when your brain is as stimulated as the rest of your body. You know what? I agree. And that's when I said, Tony, earlier about the emotional connection, the social connection, and to be able to get um, on those elements and to be able to um, understand, um, you know, the mental aspects of physical desire, of sexual desire, I'm sorry, the physical, emotional, soulful aspects of physical desire? Is it just sex and getting off? Some people only want that. Again, the more pleasure you have, the more you're going to want sex in a general sense. If you are in a messed up relationship, a toxic relationship, abusive, criticism, degrading, again, that situation or context aspect, you're going to be looking at you know, are you going to be turned on and your partner keeps degrading you for being, tur you know, low sexual desire? You don't want to have sex with me. I can't believe this. You're approved. You're this. Just degrading you. And the guy is thinking that that's automatically going to turn you on. Are you kidding me? That's sort of, he needs to be educated big time. But sometimes some men like that, I'm going to be honest with you, they ain't going to get educated. They don't want to because they're not going to be told something that, you know what, is different than the way they think. We all know people out there, there's not just men out there, there's women out there. So again, remember about desire is very, tends to be more responsive, a lot more responsive 
then it comes to spontaneous. What are you doing? Pleasure, sexual pleasure is the key that kicks up desire, okay? And are there emotional aspects that go with it? Absolutely. You know what? What puts on the brakes for you emotionally? You know, what puts on the accelerator or the gas to turn desire on? If you're giving compliments, affirmations, if your partner comes to you, oh, you're beautiful, you're sexy, I love you, you're my world. Is that more to turn you on versus, oh my God, you didn't do this today. You didn't do that today. Oh my God, is that all you did today? Look at you. You're a mess. You're, oh, I can't believe it. You're lazy. You get me? Which one's going to be more apt? to have a high desire response, to turn you on, right? So let's be real. And you have to look at these aspects. And, you know, if there is an issue, if there's exhaustion, is there a biological component? I even, you know, I recommend getting blood work done to test testosterone levels, estrogen levels, thyroid aspects. You know, is there blood pressure aspect, diabetes, pre-diabetes? Are you on a certain medication, blood pressure medication that might need to be changed that is killing your desire? These are facts. So I want you to be able to rule out any biological elements or if you know if your partner's not turning you on because they don't care about your sexual desires, they don't care about you being sexually pleased, that's going to turn you off too, and I get it. So you have to look at the context, the situation about what is triggering the desire, the high desire, and what is triggering low desire in your relationship, and are you able to talk about it and be open about it? Some people can't even talk about it. They can't even, you know, mention about, you know what, about desire, about sex at all. One person is open, wants to talk about it. That's me, right? I, I can talk about anything. And one person feels awkward about talking about sex or even improving sex or what they like, what they don't like, what turns them off. And then their partner's left in the dark and that's gonna kill that sexual desire. Chances are the one with the higher sexual desire that wants to talk about it in all about pleasing and learning about sex and pleasure within the couple, within their partner, is going to get turned off eventually. It's just a matter of time. They're going to get, and that's where that sexual incompatibility can come in as well. Okay, so look at these elements. Hopefully this video, share the video. Oh, I almost forgot, people. You need to share the video or you don't need to i if you want to win a copy of my book here it is the latest book love sex everything in between a relationship guide it's my latest book i know the camera lights are hitting it try to blend it out right there it's available on amazon share this video share the post down below for the show for a chance to win it i even pay for shipping and you can have people chime in that have gotten a book before. I mailed it to them a couple weeks ago. So I'm gonna give away more copies. You just have to share this video on your timeline or the post about the below uh, show, which is below, for a chance to win. I appreciate it, okay? Check out my website, theartofrelationships.org. And real quick, if you are in a crunch, you know what? You got in a bad car accident. You have some family legal aspect going on. You know, check out, Dan Williams and Amy Fowler at dfwnplc.com. Uh, check them out. Again, dfwnplc.com. And for some funny stuff, hat, shirts, just some sayings, you know, laugh, you need to laugh, check out ihatepeople.club. Check them out as well, okay? Peace and love to everybody out there. Take care, everybody.